Hello everyone, I'm back with another video. Today I've got the new Sony a7C Mark II and the a7CR. Yes, I'm late to the party, but I think it's still relevant, especially to those who want to see them in a real world scenario, which hopefully I can give you today. I'll be talking through both of the cameras because the bodies are the same and there are some similarities, but then I'll point out the differences between the two. I'm currently filming on the Mark II as we speak and any B-roll will be filmed on either the Mark II or the R, but I will know which is which on the screen just down here. The Sony a7C Mark I was the very first Sony full frame camera that I ever used and let me tell you I absolutely love it. And now the new and improved Mark II and R are here with very impressive technologies and features. As you guessed it, both cameras are very compact full frame camera bodies for those that travel or need a camera for casual or everyday use. I think it's safe to say that these cameras have extremely good and exciting features that can benefit a lot of creators, photographers or videographers out there. First difference is sensors and resolution. The Mark II has a 33 megapixel sensor and the R has a 61 megapixel sensor. So resolution wise, the R is miles better. Here are some comparisons from both cameras and you can really see how much detail the R captures. This absolutely amazes me. Capturing this much resolution in such a compact body makes the thought of traveling to capture beautiful landscapes so much more exciting. Both cameras have a back illuminated Exmor R CMOS sensor with the Advanced Bounds XR Imaging Processing Unit. The Mark II has the same sensor found in the A7 IV and the R has the same sensor found in the A7R5. So it's clear to say that Sony are trickling down technology found in higher and more expensive models. The engine basically delivers faster processing power so any data in colour, noise, image quality and menu response is delivered much faster than the predecessor. A big part of the new engine is the advanced AE algorithm. It can now detect the skin area of faces and adjust exposure accordingly. This is done for both stills and video and will benefit situations where the model is backlit or harsh lighting or in dark shadows. I think it's important to say that if you are using the R at the 61 megapixel sensor, then using G or G Master Glass is important just so you can take advantage of that high resolution. Because of the back illuminated Exmor R sensor, the image quality is pristine in both cameras, but more so in the A7C R. Like I said earlier, especially the same sensor with the A7R5. Because of the 61 megapixels, there's a huge advantage over the Mark II because you have the ability to aggressively crop into your shots or make bigger prints. The R has the ability to also shoot in APS-C mode at 24, 24 megapixels, which gives you the freedom to shoot with two lenses in one, if you get what I mean. <laughs> Pretty clever if you ask me. You can see the detail captured in these images and it's just insane. The R has an ISO range of 100 to 32,000 and expandable from 50 to 102,400. The Mark II has an ISO range of 100 to 51,200 and expandable from 50 to 204,800 in stills and ISO 100 to 103,400 in video. Great for low light situations where you need the extra help and dynamic range. The high burst shooting in the Mark II shoots at 10 frames per second and the R shoots 8 frames per second, both with AF and AE tracking. When testing this, I found it good. I found it good. I found it very good but the R seems to struggle with the buffering. I suspect this is down to the resolution, but that is definitely something to take note of. The Mark II's buffer was absolutely fine. New to the A7C R is pixel shift multi-shooting function, which the Mark II doesn't have. This uses in-body image stabilization to capture multi-pixel shifted images that composites into an extremely high resolution image. Already found in some of the latest Sony models, the new AI processing unit allows both cameras to accurately recognize subjects, especially a wider range of subjects like humans, animals, birds, insects, cars, trains, and airplanes, I think. 
Like the Sony A6700, you can now select which body part you wish to focus on and prioritise, which I think is brilliant. As always, we've done an AF test and you can see that both cameras are tack sharp on the eye and then the head when the eyes aren't in sharp. This is something that I've come to expect in future Sony cameras because I just think it's brilliant and super reliable, especially when filming on a gimbal. Tap on the face and off we go. I can trust that the camera will track the subject whilst I focus on composition and what's going on in the frame. I found the tracking to work really, really well. Definitely an upgrade from the original 7C, let's just say that. What I did find was that when the camera was tracking autofocus, there was, I can see it now actually, there is a white box around the eye, which is very evident every time I move my head, the box just tracks either or eye, which you can set in the menu to track either left or right or both or also, you know what I mean. <laughs> Found it in the ZV-E1 and the A6700 is the AI based auto framing movies. Set this up in camera, mount the camera on a tripod and off you go. Single shooters will definitely benefit from this. The camera will act as if there's a camera operator following the subject in frame. Like I said, great for single shooters. The Mark II has 759 phase detection points, same as the A74, covering 94% of image area when shooting stills, and the R has 693 phase detection points, same as the A7R5, covering 79% of image area. Both focus down to minus 4 EV in AFS, allowing you to focus in difficult lighting situations. Now moving on to IBIS, there's in-body 5-axis 7-step image stabilisation in both cameras which enables smooth and steady footage. For video, there's standard and active stabilisation. I personally stick to standard IBIS if I'm shooting handheld as I want to capture more frame. With active IBIS, it crops into the frame to enable the extra stability. Like the original, they are both very compact and lightweight in body, but now have a few extra buttons and dials. The Mark II and R share the same button layout, but new from the original is the custom C1 button above the LCD screen, a dial on the front of the grip, and a new stills moving SNQ switch under the mode dial, making it easier for hybrid shooters to switch between the three modes. I really enjoy the switch because it's super easy to switch between the three modes without adjusting your grip. One thing I will note though is the on and off switch is now around the shutter button, which Feels like it's going the opposite way, but I don't think that's, I think that's just me. But I just, I find it quite, like, in the way. Not in the way, I just, yeah, I think it's just hard to adjust to it. I don't know why. Um, I think that's just a personal preference, to be honest. But anyway, <laughs> I really enjoyed how lightweight and small the original was, especially when I was traveling, taking pictures in populated areas. So it's great to see that they've kept the lightweight and compact bodies in both of these. And what is great is that a lot of the higher end features that are seen in higher Sony cameras have trickled down into these small compact bodies. So thumbs up from me. <laughs> There's also a new grip, which is available to purchase and is in fact included in the A7C-R which makes the handling much more comfortable especially when larger lenses are mounted. The grip is an optional extra to the Mark II but like I said will be available soon. Both share the same MPPZ100 battery same as the original and that in the Sony a7 V, A1 and many other Sony cameras. So we know that the battery life is going to be reliable, especially shooting at higher codecs. Both weigh relatively the same. They are at 430 grams and the two at just under 429 grams, which is body only. Like the original, there's a fully articulated LCD screen on both cameras with full touch functions to navigate through the function and main menus. The viewfinders are still set to one side, like the original 7C, but now improved magnification. Both 2.36 million dot XGA OLED electronic viewfinders with a 0 0.70 times magnification. Now onto the ports, again both the same with headphone, 3.5mm mic jack, USB-C terminal, 
single card slots that supports UHS one and two cards and finally a micro HDMI output. Both have the same multi function hot shoe with digital audio interface on the top of the camera. There's a choice of either a silver or black body. I personally prefer the silver. It's different to most of the other Sony cameras and I think it just looks smarter. So Sony say that both cameras are dust and moisture resistant, but they don't mention to what degree. Moving on to the video specs. The R offers slightly better video specs than the Mark II, but it isn't huge at all. <laughs> the Mark II can capture 4K 30p over sample from 7K full frame and 4K 60p in super 35mm uh, crop, which will crop into the frame, both at 422 and 4210 bit quality in either HD65 or HD64. So you have plenty of options with the Mark II. However, the R can capture 4K 60p full frame with a 1.2 times crop and 4K 30p oversampled from 6.2K footage in Super 35mm. So again, a slight crop, both in 42 and 40 10-bit quality in either HT65 and HT64 file formats. For slow motion, both offer full HD at up to 120 frames per second, which is pretty standard nowadays. Both shoot SOG3 and S-Cinetone. S-Cinetone has the same colour science as that found in the Sony Cinema lines, so skin tones and colour reproduction is very nice. I mostly shoot SOG3 because it offers a greater dynamic range, and I find that most of the time I can save any over or under exposed shots to an extent, of course. With SLOG3, you can get 14 plus stops of latitude. There's also S Gamma 3 and S Gamma 3 Cine that are also available in both cameras. New to the more recent models is the option to apply your own LUTs, which allows you to visualize and film with the final look whilst eliminating any color grading time in post-production. Now, overheating. So far, I've had no issues whilst filming with either camera. I know there has been some reports with other Sony cameras overheating after 15 plus minutes, but so far we are all good. I did actually run both to test how long they would last before overheating, and it was actually the SD cards that filled up first, both 128GB SD cards. Whilst recording this script, the Mark II hasn't overheated whilst filming this whole script or any sample footage from this morning and both cameras were absolutely fine. Now moving on to the price point, the Mark II has launched at 2099 and the R launched at 3199. If we compare this to the original A7C, the Mark II is actually only £450 more expensive and I think for the upgrades and new features it's 100% worth it, especially with the updated AF abilities, they're just crazy good. The Mark II also comes as a kit with the 2860mm f4-5.6 to lens which launched at 2349 and is available in both colourways, silver and black. The R is sold as body only but again available in black and silver. Yes, the R is currently £1000 more than the Mark II but I think for the added features, the higher resolution and the grip extension, it's 100% worth it especially for someone that needs a 61 megapixel resolution in such a compact body. The grip makes it so much more comfortable to hold, especially when you are mounting larger telephoto lenses. So that's a bonus. As expected, I knew I would personally love these two models and I think they're great for content creators and people that travel and need compact kit people like me, essentially. The R is great for photographers that need a larger sensor and resolution, but again, in such a compact body. I found myself leaning more towards the R today whilst getting sample footage, don't know why. Um, maybe it's because of the, the grip, and because I was using the 7200 F4. Maybe I just found it more comfortable, I'm not sure, but I found myself filming a lot more video on the R than I did on the Mark II. But I think it's really just down to price point and whether you need that extra resolution in the R. The Mark II is great for creators that need something a little more affordable but still jam-packed full of the latest technology. I really enjoyed using these cameras. It's a great travel and everyday option for creators like me. So 
So let me know in the comments what you think. Are you happy with what both cameras have to offer? And what cameras are you considering alongside these two models? If you enjoyed this video, then please do give this video a like and comment any thoughts or questions. Also, don't forget to subscribe to help us grow our channel. Until next time, I will see you all soon.